Kurt, you've been handing out plaudits and uh, bouquets all day. You want to give a bouquet of flowers to Adrian Clem for what he's done with this offensive line? A Adrian gets a nice sheet cake with a good job, Adrian, <laughs> stenciled across the oh, middle of nice. it. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it's his first game as well with this group. And we saw what happened last year with, you know, the Billy Yates, Matt Patricia combo. And they were utterly unprepared. We saw in that opener last year against the Miami Dolphins, again, a pretty decent defensive performance overall. But there was a strip sack touchdown in the first half on which Trent Brown and Cole Strange misplayed a block and turned into a touchdown. So there were very few plays on which I said, OK, the offensive line is non-competitive or they're killing him. Um, so to me, excellent job, excellent game plan, excellent job of everything working in concert. And the last thing I'll say real quick is to look at the screen game being as good as it was, because that's the most synchronized, difficult thing to execute against a team because there's so much timing involved. And they had some really effective screens, including one late where Antonio Maffi got out and had a key block on the double pirouette spin play by Ramondre Stevenson. That's not easy to do, and I, I was pleasantly surprised to see it. Phil, uh, Giles said the reason he has even more confidence in the offensive line right now than he thought he might is because they were missing Mike Onwenu and Cole Strange, two guys who actually have some experience at the positions they're going to be asked to play. How much better do they, like, where will we, might we see that difference once they step on the field? Oh, I think you'll see it right away, and I think you see it in the run game. The Patriots could not run the football yesterday, and it really hampered what they wanted to do offensively, I think, which is kill clock. Keep Jalen Hurts in this offense off the field. We know what the Patriots defense eventually did to them, but I think going in, you understand this is a pretty explosive group, tough group to match up, match up with, tough quarterback design run game to try to handle. Let's try to keep our defense off the field as much as we can, run the ball, waste some clock, and they just couldn't do it. Ramondre Stevenson's yards per carry was less than three. I mean, that is atrocious, really. So maybe you give them even more credit that they were able to keep the Eagles Giles off of Mac Jones yeah. for there only to be two sacks. Yeah. It is an impressive performance. I agree with David Andrews. He was under pressure on almost a third of his dropbacks, which is high, but it could have been much worse than it was. I, I, I just I found it going back and watching it again today. The first QB hit they had on Mac Jones was midway through the third quarter. Like that in that Eagles defensive front. Maybe, you know, it's, it's going to look better uh, in, in future weeks here, but they had, what, 70 sacks last year, led the NFL, yep. and they're, they're only stronger on that defensive line. I will say, the Eagles last year, if you look back at their sack totals, slow to start and an absolute uh, avalanche towards the end of the season. So I wonder if it takes them some time to get things going. All right, we need to talk. We talk, did talk a little last block about the Patriots' miscues. One of those, in my opinion, was the decision not to kick a field goal on fourth and three from the Eagles' 17 in the fourth quarter when the Pats trailed by eight. Here is Bill Belichick's explanation. It was the best decision for the team. Uh, in hindsight, do you wish you had kicked more field goals in this one? No, we made the best decision we could at the time. Didn't know we'd be down there, you know, multiple times. Six minutes to go in the game. I don't know. Big kick that I'm sure you'd be asking Levin to go for it. Yeah, but six minutes to go in a game where you hadn't scored a touchdown since the second quarter of the game, Giles. I just don't understand. Anderson on the fourth and eighth. You're not going to ask Ryland to come out there at what was that 53, 54 yards to yeah, kick a field right. goal yeah. as, a, as a rookie. But once you get to fourth and three, to go for it again and not kick the field goal and take the points, I just don't understand it. To me, it means you either don't trust your kicker or I don't know what you're doing. Like you're missing Ernie Adams up in the booth to tell you what to do. I would have, uh, yeah, I would have preferred if they took the points there. Uh, but the fourth and 17 was more of a head scratcher for me. I understand at that point you only got a few minutes left in the game and they're worried about maybe not getting the ball back, but you had all three timeouts. And Thursday night, you're sitting there making fun of Andy Reid for going forward on fourth and 20, fourth and 20. 25, whatever that ended up being, uh, I, I just I couldn't believe that Bill would also go for it on fourth and 17 here. You, you had the opportunity to pin the Eagles deep, and at that point, you're, I think you're also coming off the Jalen Hurts fumble. It's like if you have the Eagles inside their own five-yard line, who knows what can happen at that point. And that was a play. The fourth and 17 is following the delay of game penalty, which goes back mm -hmm. to the operational issues, and I don't know what happened there. Is there something between the communication for Bill O'Brien to Mac Jones or vice versa? Like, 
that's the operational stuff that Tom is talking about that they need to get cleaned up, and it really plagued them all game. We think that the first quarter was really the only time they had issues. It really continued throughout the game in fits and starts. And so, Trini, I'm with you, and it wasn't even six minutes. It was about nine and a half when they had fourth and three and the ability to kick that field goal. That's, that's a lot of time left, Tom. Wouldn't you want to take the points in that situation knowing that you get the ball back? Also, Kern, are you confident they can clean up these mistakes? Because this has been a pattern the last couple of years. Yeah, let me take a bite at the strategic apple first. On the fourth and three, maybe he's figuring, hey, in for a diamond for a dollar. We just went for it on fourth and eight. We have a play we like. Let's do it. But just explain that. Don't cower from the question as if it's beneath you or, or it's an attack. I mean, people want to hear from the greatest coach of all time. Generally on those fourth down plays, generally, if you look at the statistics, they're really close. It might increase or decrease your win percentage by a percentage point or two, but I generally don't spend a ton of time second guessing going for it and not going for it on those fourth downs because it is a coin flip and there is a, a tenor to the game. The Patriots defense was playing so good, I could see them saying, OK, we're going to stop them again. So that's why I would have liked to see the field goal. We'll get the ball back and do more. Again, that penalty on Calvin Anderson really hurt. They have to clean it up. I, I would believe they would clean it up, but I said the same thing last year. Again, uh, I'm, You'll see it. I'm not going to do it You'll believe it when you see it. Hey, it's got to be better stuff. <laughs> I have to with that stuff.